Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So how can you get lots of bottle gourds growing on a single plant? That's what the topic of today's video is going to be. So let's show you. So right behind me here, I've got a couple of bottle gourds growing. I've got one growing out of this tire and one growing out of this uh, old dustbin. And to share the space with it, I've got a tomato growing with it as well. I need to stake that up. Um, and that's going to be growing out of this space here and the bottle gourds climbing over the back. But as you can see, what I've done is I've got this bottle gourd to produce lots and lots of secondary and tertiary vines. So one of the things to do whenever you've got bottle gourds like this and you get this, these old leaves that are getting very little air but they're starting to die back, get rid of these, get rid of these old leaves. So anything that's not getting much light, not getting much air, get rid of them because these are the things that are going to cause disease. And that's what I keep saying that I've been doing with a lot of plants, that anything, any leaves that are old, that are going to cause problems for me in terms of airflow, I get rid of them and that keeps the plant healthy. There's even a vine here or even a shoot that's going to, that's, see there's even a shoot here that's pointing in the wrong direction. I don't want that, it's going to cause me a problem, so I'm going to get rid of it because it's growing downwards, it's not going in the way that I want it to grow, so it can go, there's no need for it. So with bottle gourds, they grow on the secondary and tertiary vines, That's the, they're the fruiting vines. So what I did with the, in order to get this to grow is I, I got the main vine to reach up to the top, and as soon as it reached up to the top, I pinched it out and that encouraged it to throw out lots of secondary shoots. And that's what you've got all, all over here. You've got all these secondary and tertiary shoots. So anytime you get a shoot like this um, and you want it to, you want the plant to grow bigger, just snip the end off. Yeah, so it's not a massive cut that you have to make. Just snip the end off and that'll, that'll encourage that to show, throw out lots and lots more shoots. Now this shoot is growing in the wrong direction again and it's not going to, it's going to cause me a problem if I let it grow this way because I've got nowhere for it to go so it can go. I don't need it. I'm going to take that off and that's going to, that's going to give me a good shape on my plant and all these plants can just carry on growing over here. That if it wants to I'm going to let it climb up and le reach over this arch. Let's just use this uh, tendril to tie it, tie in up there. So once it reaches it with the tendrils, it'll take over. But let me show you what I've got on here. I've got a couple of gourds set in here, one there and another one just down here that's set. That's all I've been doing with them is just making sure that they're getting plenty of sunlight and getting plenty of airflow. That one's actually going to need tying up because it's going to bring the whole vine down the way it's hanging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, an old stocking, a uh, lady's sock or you know the nylon socks or something. And I'm just going to use a pair of that, a pair of stockings or a pair of suspenders or something to give it a bit of, give it a, a growing space and I'm going to hang it. Sus I'm just going to suspend it from there really. So that's what I'm going to use uh, some lady's suspenders for. So let's get rid of that leaf as well. Get rid of these old leaves. Anything that's going to cause disease, get rid of it. You don't want it on there. Um, I've got some more gourds that are growing. So I've got another one set fruit just over there. And as you can see, this has just taken over the whole place. And they're, they're just rambling all over the place. Absolutely fine. You know, they're doing really, really well. Now, in the middle here, I've got a male flower. And I'm just going to get this male flower because I'm going to need him. And I've got a female flower just over here. So these are two bottle gold flowers. As you can see, they look absolutely gorgeous. If you look inside them, you can see the difference in the shape of the flower as well. Um, and then if you look at the back of them, you can see that the female flower has this little fruit whereas on the male flower it doesn't have the same fruit so i'm going to hand pollinate this now one thing that you'll notice is that you won't always get um fruit setting at the same time you won't 
you won't get uh, male and female flowers appearing at the same time on the same plant. So it's good to use as many, you know, it's good. If you haven't got um, a bottle gold male plant and a female plant at the same time, use a different one. Uh, use one from a different plant. So now I've stripped the petals back and I've got the pollen separated on its own. Give it a gentle flick and all that pollen is just going to end up on the female flower there and that will turn into a nice fertile plant. So you can see all the pollen that's already all, all over the female flower now. So that will turn, hopefully that will set fruit and it'll give me a nice bottle gourd growing there as well. And that's what I've been doing with the, with a lot of these. I've been hand pollinating them. In the UK, our native bees won't pollinate these like they will with other squash. They still have a distinct smell to other squash. And in Bangladesh and in India and uh, the subcontinent, these are actually pollinated by a moth that only comes out at night time. And those same moths aren't native to the UK, so they don't grow here. Um, so it's good to get them hand pollinated and get them get them uh, setting fruit that way. Always, like I've mentioned a, a few times now, make sure you've got a nice clean base on your bottle gourd plant. So here, I've got this half-eaten leaf that's coming off. Don't be don't be afraid. There's a, a stem that didn't quite make it that's coming off. Yeah, because you want a clean base. You want you don't want anything that's going to get soil damage you don't want to get anything that's going to get splashed by soil and get damaged you don't want to give anything you know bugs a chance to come in anything unhealthy get rid of it you can see where the plant the root start and now where i've just trimmed it all up i'm going to fill it with compost back up to there that'll give it another feed for the rest of the season so i'll add another inch of compost into there and keep keep that growing and keep that feed going and this area always does well with my gourds. Last year, this is where Dean uh, picked a couple from. Uh, so we've got more over here. I've got another one climbing up this side. Uh, I've got a male flower on its own here, but no female flower to go with him. But he'll be all right. He's a lonely, he can, he can survive, I'm sure, on his own. Uh, but yeah, over this arch, I've got cucumbers that are going to climb in up. But let's go on and get back to my bottle gourds uh, and I'll show you how to get these germinating some more. So if we go back here, I've got another one in this pot and I've got some yellowing leaves as well. These yellowing leaves are coming off. They've done their job, they're, they're low down, they're not getting much light, they're not doing any work now. But be careful when you're taking these leaves off. The last time I did this, uh, I came in and I snipped what I thought was a leaf and I ended up taking out a main vine. So just, just be careful. Um, you can, you, even I make, make these silly mistakes. Underneath the, my arch of this bottle gourd, I've got potato plants growing up and I should have a good crop here. There's another one that's just about to set there. So then another fruit that's set there. They need a good amount of water. So make sure you're giving them, giving these plants lots of water, especially when it's hot like it is at the moment. So in a pot like that, I'll probably give it that pot half a bucket of water a day. Normally you're told to, uh, to water at night time. Now, if you've got that in a greenhouse, make sure you water during the day or early on so it keeps the root zone cool. These bottle gourds don't mind their roots being sat in water. They don't mind being sunk in water once they've grown up a little bit. Because remember in Bangladesh, sometimes these things are growing on, you know, their roots are actually underwater and they're still doing well. It's not ideal, but they'll cope with it. But the problem the key is not to let them dry out at all so onto my main arch and i've got these cl gourds climbing all over the place and all of these are tertiary vines so you can see here another vine's been snipped off because it was coming out into the wrong direction and that's going to send out side shoots and they're going to go that way and now if i get like this shoot here it's climbing over over into this direction i want him i want him moving over that way so I'm just going to uh, undo this. Once these plants get a grip, they're really strong. They're one of the strongest, um, they're one of the strongest cucurbits in terms of their grip. So I'm just going to move him over and I'm going to point him in the direction that I want him to go in. And that's the same thing I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to bring that one underneath the arch. 
don't be afraid to direct these to where you want them to go. So I've got these growing under here and I'm going to just pull them over and I'm going to push them under here and they're going to come up. Because the tendrils are really strong, once the tendrils reach where you want them to go, all, all I do is I, I cheat a little bit so you don't need a bit of string. Just take two tendrils and just tie them, tie them together and that'll do it. Yeah? And you can get the plant going where you want it to go. So we've got different varieties of gourds going there and these are small round, uh, these are small um, birdhouse gourds and a lot of people grow in the west grow these as ornaments but they're perfectly edible and I really like them. They're the perfect size for one dish unless you're sharing one of the other big gourds you're not having to cut it and then store half of it and cook half of it with these ones are the perfect size for one dish they grow to about that sort of size and a couple of years ago we had them hanging all over the place here we had loads of them they're really prolific I've got a gourd planted at each post and they're all climbing up now they've finally reached the top and they're just spreading all, all over the place soon this whole trellis at the top is going to be covered with foliage and what I'm doing in the meantime is I'm coming in and I'm thinning out some of the leaves getting rid of some of the excess growth and I'm just pushing getting these vines into the position so they can climb up once the tendrils get hold of the top they'll be they'll be away in no time um, and so the, their tendrils are really strong do you know once the grip on them is absolutely amazing how strong they are so I'm gonna leave that one oh. just to prove me wrong <laughs> Oh, there you go. Just to prove me wrong, on video, he didn't want to do it. I'm going to have to use a bit of string and tie that one in. <laughs> so I say something and just to, just to prove me wrong, it, it, does, it does the opposite. The thing I use to tie with is, is it's, it's an old sari, a cotton sari. And they make, they rip, rip off really well and they make really good soft ties. A lot of lot of ties that you can buy from shops and stuff, they can end up snapping your plant or they can end up cutting your plant. But with these soft ties, they're not going to cause any damage to the stem. And you're recycling uh, your old garments. I mean, I use my old t-shirts, saris, what, uh, tablecloths, whatever you've got. Just use that. And there's my plant there. Hook. Hook her, hook her in and she's good up here there we go just pull that into a knot good that'll be fine and once once that gets climbing up there away she's going to go and this plant's just going to take over absolutely going to take over this here's a vine that needs tying in and pulling up So let's see if I can do this with just the tendrils working. Oh, it's done it. So that one, the tendrils reached and they did it. Like this leaf here is growing inwards, it's squashing that little baby gourd that's growing. Get rid of it. You don't want anything to get in. There's my fruit. You don't want anything to compromise your fruit and your fruit set. Here's something that I want to show you that, that's quite interesting. When I planted these gourds, I filled the bucket up to the top but the compost has settled quite a bit now there's a, a massive ditch it's dropped by about four or five inches now the thing to do when you have plants like this is make sure you're coming in and you're topping it up with compost I've seen a lot of people complaining about their plants and the plants are struggling but they're only half filling their pots with compost now look at the size of that pot that's full of kitchen scraps, it's full of wood chips, it's full of loads of compost. There's at least 100 litres of compost growing in there. There's two plants planted in there, but there's 100 litres of compost just for that. Now, and I'm going to top it up with even more. So don't be stingy on the compost. When you do that, you're going to be depriving the plant of much needed root nutrients and depriving the plant of um, much needed growing space. When you can, grow the plants in the ground. 
uh, and they always do well. I mean, these ones are growing in the ground and they're growing perfectly fine and they'll be growing up and they'll be taking over. Those ones over there, they're all growing in the ground, they're gonna be taking over. One of the common diseases for bottle gourds is blight. You'll notice them, you'll notice blotchy patches appearing on the stem, you'll notice blotchy patches appearing on the leaves. When you get blight, there's no cure for it. So good housekeeping is key, making sure that there's plenty of airflow around the plants, making sure you're getting rid of any diseased leaves around the plant as soon as you notice it, anything that, that's starting to rot, any um, fruit that are rotting, get rid of it. That's just gonna allow for pests to come in and it's gonna allow for disease to set and you don't want that. So come on, let me show you uh, some more of my bottle gourds and how I've got them growing. So this arch, this arch is doing really well. This actually, this arch always, every year it does well. Some vines are going over here and I have some vines climbing over the top of the shed. So if I climb up here, I've got more fruit set over here. So I've actually got a tendril there strangling the bottle gourd. So I'm just gonna move that tendril because that was gonna cause problems on that gourd. And that's setting quite nicely, mashallah. So we've got a couple of plants there, la quwata illa billah. But we've got some damaged leaves as well. And these damaged leaves need to come out. So anything like that, you will get these leaves. They're, it's very common to have this sort of thing, especially when you're growing in pots and in buckets, because sometimes you're not getting the right nutrients in there. You're not getting the right amount of water, even if you've got the nutrients in there get rid of it you don't need it so it's Eid tomorrow and we're gonna have a bit of a celebration Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. so Alhamdulillah there's my first bottle go to the season it's not the biggest thing but it's gonna be great for Eid I'm gonna really enjoy this now one of the keys to test you might see a little few little marks on this one of the keys to test when a bottle gourd's ripe or not is your fingernail should just push through the skin really easy. If you find your fingernail doesn't push through the skin like that, then your bottle gourd's overripe. Just to sum up, make sure you're tipping out, pinching out growing tips. Make sure you've got lots of secondary, especially secondary and tertiary vines, because they're the ones that are gonna fruit. Make sure you're hand pollinating because we don't get pollen, we don't get the right pollinators for bottle gourds in this country. Make sure that you're giving them a good amount of compost and if your compost level is sinking and your roots are starting to become exposed make sure you're topping them up so there's a few tips on growing bottle gourds and how to get them to fruit and how to get them to set fruit and how to get them to grow all the way go and check out some of my naga planting videos because i know if you're into bottle gourds you love your nagas and your chilies do go and check out those i'll leave some links at somewhere around here at the end of this video I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.